İslam ekonomisi ve kalkınma ile ilgili 20'ye yakın kitabı ve yüze yakın makalesi bulmaktadır. It's your turn. You have to answer this. Okay, thank you. Halal, uh, halal food, halal industries. 
Uh, we're very keen of establishing halal industries, uh, so is in Malaysia and all over the Muslim world. But then uh, there are uh, uh, elements of commercialization. So is Waka, for instance, Zakat, for instance. Uh, we are talking about our government to show up in Turkey, but uh, back in Malaysia, I can see the trends that uh, when you talk about Zakat, uh, or about Waka or Zakat, you tend to go from uh, the subsistence level of Zakat and Waka to what they call productive Zakat and Waka, which entrenched that, embedded in that, are elements of the Western commercialization process. So we are actually probably need to think back whether what we are doing to establish Islamic economics uh, system, or we are actually strengthening the Western economic system. All right. Number four, the causes is that uh, so far uh, it is hardly to see whether uh, out of the Islamic economic system, uh, through alcohol, through zakat, through Islamic banking, etc., that we actually. Have, uh, has been able to establish uh, the, uh, the, the Islamic culture society. Uh, but then, uh, from my brief observation, I can see that actually we have been using zakat to help the poor, for instance, fakir and miskin uh, and, uh, and uh, other asnaf, but then they don't really come up uh, uh, with a higher iman, with a higher, higher tapo and all that. But instead, they become some normal persons and try to fulfill, uh, fulfill their basic needs and then they maintain as what well they are. So, uh, so is the Islamic banking. We have the customers, there are a lot of studies, it shows that actually uh, those customers who are dealing with Islamic uh, bankings are not really do so because of their uh, Islamic awareness, but instead because of public certainty, because of stability of Islamic banking and finance, and because of other things apart from not actually from the uh, Islamic consciousness. So uh, I think there are, the, these are the four consequences that we need to probably to rethink, to revisit. And, uh, but I can see that in the mainstream Islamic economies, uh, there are reasons why uh, uh, they don't find their, uh, their, their concepts. Um, and then, uh, most of the arguments uh, is that uh, it is all right to do so to accommodate the concepts with the Western Eurocentric concepts as well as it is not in contrary to Islamic Akita and Sharia. I think we need to take this back uh, because uh, to my observation I think uh, it seems that there are confusion between the operational level and the philosophical level. Uh, it can be said that it is not contrary, they are not contrary at operational level. But then we go back to the philosophical level, you can see the contradiction between uh, the Western ethnocentric concepts and also the Islamic concepts. And therefore, I think uh, we, have, we need to change that. We need to change the philosophical, uh, the philosophy and epistemology underpinnings, underpinnings of the Western concept with Islamic uh, epistemological and uh, philosophical underpinnings. And as we do that, when we change that uh, to Islam, and then the concept itself can become Islam, and therefore I think there is no question whether we can accommodate it or not. Uh, this is the uh, first reason. The second reason, uh, I used to hear and read also that uh, the advocates of the accommodative approach are saying that Rasulullah well, himself he used to eclectically accommodate some of the great practices of the jahiliya, of the ignorant, uh, to be practiced by the Muslims. Uh, but then, uh, from my brief visit and also readings, uh, I observed that actually the concept that I have been accommodated by Rasulullah actually evolved uh, only around their names and terms, uh, but while the structures and also its roots have been uh, reconstructed by Rasulullah uh, based on Islamic Aqidah, Ibadah, and uh, Akhlaq. And for that reason, I think uh, whenever uh, for that reason, I think my stance is actually uh, it is incorrect to adopt an accommodative modification and methodologic and practicism approach embedded in fake based neoclassical economics as characterized now by the contemporary mainstream Islamic economics. Uh, that is my stance, and therefore, I think, uh, uh, let's see, I take one of the concepts that has been popularly used 
among the Islamic economists is poverty. So let's see the concept of poverty, for instance. If you read, if, if you read uh, the, the, the, the references on the literatures on the poverty, and uh, how they try to uh, elevate poverty from Islamic perspective, either through zakat, wakaf, or etc. And then the, they don't really define what is poverty. So therefore we can see that, for instance, the poverty has been defined at the level of living that lies below subsistence level, or the insufficiency and the lack of the material means to live a tolerable and meaningful existence, or a situation where one cannot support the needs by the own means. So all of these uh, uh, trends, uh, definition of poverty is no different from the Western uh, ethnocentric meanings of poverty. So the level of living, substance level, tolerable and meaningful uh, existence, the needs and the means are understood similarly to the understandings of the functional concepts. And therefore the Islamic instruments have been used in such a way that to fulfill the definition defined by the Western uh, uh, scholars. Uh, I do deny that actually among the Muslim scholars, all of us, inshallah, are aware of the need to take into account the spiritual domains, the religious domains, and also the religious elements into our system, uh, which includes Iman, Taqwa, spirituality, to account that. Uh, but uh, we can see in the writings, they tend to ignore that. Say, for instance, they mentioned one name, sorry, I'm not probably uh, always know him. Uh, he clearly stated that uh, poverty in Islam involves a spiritual aspect. But then uh, he proceeds in his book uh, with his focus on the deliberations of the nation, of the notion of deep, uh, deprivation in the, the, the economic sense. And therefore, he left the spiritual aspects alone. And uh, he holds the statement by Abdul Rahman, who says that individual are able to improve the spiritual lives by improving the material life. So he is thinking that uh, when you improve the, uh, the material life, and then ultimately we can improve our spiritual life. And so is Manan, for instance. Uh, he is uh, aware that human poverty is not responsible for the material as well as uh, with cultural and spiritual poverty. Uh, and that the abundance of goods does not alone ensure richness in Islam, but he too uh, sides away from the inclusions of cultural and spiritual poverty and to just confine on the material poverty and uh, Islamic responses to it, although he acknowledges that uh, it is very important to take into account the cultural and spiritual poverty. Uh, when we go through the previous scholars, the Greek scholars of Islam, you can see that actually uh, in the discussion, in the discussion, there are always the spiritual elements, uh, the, the Habibna, the Habibna relationship between Allah and man in their definition. So for instance, if you take Iman al-Ghazali, for instance, uh, he defines uh, the concept of poverty as the, the concept of miskin and fakir in relation uh, to the need, to the one's need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he argues that uh, Faki is only attributable to human beings, while wealth only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he comes uh, uh, to define the concept of uh, absolute Faki, which he means that who does not feel the need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and therefore he is in absolute poverty, absolute Faki. Uh, so we can see the concept of Faki, al Faki ila Allah, al Faki ila Rabbi, and uh, all that. So, um, and therefore, I think um, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the case of poverty, for instance, um, uh, we have to redefine that, and uh, probably we can involve and we can, uh, we can take into consideration uh, five uh, aspects. Number one is the humanistic aspects of it. Uh, we understand that it is targeted, targeted, and submissions to and the inclusions of the Creator, the God, the One, and the Absolute One Steering. Number two is dogmatic. Uh, we have our dogmas, uh, we have to accept, uh, to accept our dogmas and the one's belief system uh, unquestion un unquestionably. And number three, we have to have the holistic integration, uh, which we call a uh, relationship with men and men, Habibullah and also Habibullah, relationship between men and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Number four, we have to accept and in fact include uh, the definition of poverty, uh, the elements of transitory. We said we are not permanent in this world, we are only on our journey to the next life, and therefore poverty is just a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, uh, and then we can, we, can, uh, we, can, we can define that, uh, we can develop, reconstruct the, the, the definition of poverty in, in, in relation to that. And uh, uh, fifthly, uh, also we have to include the elements of this uh, instrument, Meaning that uh, uh, the usage of all one's action as two things. Whatever we do, it is a tool for worship, and uh, also in a relative party, also is part of uh, tools to, to, to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and. Uh, when, when, this, uh, when, when uh, this five animals are taken into consideration, and therefore the poor, the means of the poor and rich become selective. Uh, I know that this is very controversial, uh, but I need to say this, uh, probably uh, that the poor can enlighten me on this. I think uh, there are people who deserve to be poor, and there are people who deserve, uh, I can see from Sa'asa also, to be on that. And there are people who deserve to be rich. And uh, I think uh, the higher the demand, the richer the soul. And the lower the demand, the poor the soul. And the soul is the most important thing to determine whether we can be poor or we can be rich. Uh, the richer the soul, the greater the choice. Or you can see the Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, uh, like uh, Serena Abraham bin Auf, who was rich. And uh, he wanted to become a poor man, but then Rasulullah refused to accept his wish. And uh, at the same time, sometimes we can see that there are also a group of uh, the Muslim, Ali Sufa, who were poor and not working, but then was not asked by Rasulullah to work. And uh, the, the works again, uh, the, the, the employment again, uh, is defined if we define it from the Islam or from the uh, Western perspective, we can say that they are in absolute poverty. Uh, they were in uh, unemployed uh, because uh, to us, employment means that we earn money, we earn uh, living uh, through money. But Ali Sufa did not earn any money, but he was working for Islam, learning <coughs> with the Allah, so went to jihad. And, uh, and therefore, we can see. There were two different groups. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One uh, was living in poverty. One is living, uh, was living in poverty, and the other one was living in poor. But both were allowed by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I think um, the main uh, the main uh, uh, consideration in that is that if you are rich, you have the choice. Now, if you are rich in poor, I mean in, in your soul, and therefore we have the choice of being either poor or being uh, a rich uh, man. So, uh, if can, um, we can identify that, and therefore, uh, uh, policy implications is that uh, we can have the right educations of target groups. Uh, and then therefore, we have the right education for the needy, and uh, we can avoid, inshallah, the wastage of the education. So what is happening now, uh, <coughs> well, in, in my country for instance, the identification of the poor target group has been determined by the power. Yeah? And, and therefore, uh, sometimes uh, I used to do a research on uh, the perceptions of the poor towards poverty. And when I take a list uh, of the poor from the government, and then when to see them, some of them refused to accept that they are the poor. Because they will say that, you look, if I want to eat chicken, my chicken is all around my house. And uh, if, one, if, if I want to, to, to, to have a fish, you see, look at the river behind my house. I can always go there and take as many fish as possible. And then, uh, as I want, as I wish. And then the vegetable also uh, at the back of my house. But if you measure my property according to money, according to monetary measurement, I don't have the money. But I have the resources, and therefore I'm not poor, please don't cut me. So usually the definitions of the poor are being constructed by us, the intellectuals. 
Yeah, the, the, the civil servants who think that they are better than the poor people. So uh, usually we have the wrong target groups, and uh, therefore the elevation of poverty uh, doesn't uphold direct to the, the right target groups. And also, we also use the elevations to the, uh, the misleading target groups. And some of them were saying that I'm not going to use the elevation uh, because I think that I'm good enough and well enough and therefore I don't need anything from the government. And uh, therefore we uh, uh, wasted our education and we can see that the budget increased to improve the poverty, uh, to, to, to, to, to improve the poverty, but at the same time we are actually losing the education to, uh, to the people who want to meet the, the hearts. So um, I think lastly, when we include all the spiritual elements into the definition of poverty, and we can divide the people into four categories. Number one is rich in souls, and rich in material sense. And uh, I think uh, this is the most commendable category that we should uh, uh, create as many as possible. But at the same time, there, are, there, there is a group uh, who is rich in soul, but a poor in wealth, and this will be allowed to exist out of his own choice uh, see, uh, since he is able to live without burdening the state and society. And also, uh, they do not adventure uh, their iman, inshallah, because they're so uh, uh, uh, rich. Um, number three is the poor. Poor is so and poor wealth. Uh, I think this is the most negative category of people and the most needy people. Uh, to be helped uh, by the whoever, and then at this option, parts of the state's education should be allocated to them. Uh, and the number four is poor in soul and rich in wealth. This is another category of people who also need tax, and therefore you need to include also to rich into the poverty planning, uh, poverty elevation planning. It's not only the poor, but also the rich, who is rich in material but poor in soul. I think this is the second most negative category of people around us and I think such parts of the state security also should be allocated to them because if they are a rich in soul and the power that the, the, the, the, the, wealth, the, the wealth that they have they can contribute and distribute it to the, to the people and uh, therefore I think uh, uh, such parts of the state security should also be allocated to them uh, despite of the richness of the richness, so as to allow them to increase the richness of their souls, inshallah, so that the richness will benefit the states and the society as a whole. So, um, and therefore, as a conclusion, I think the concepts used, I just take poverty as a uh, as a case, so that uh, we can see that how different is the definition of a concept that we use in Islamic economics, as opposed to the conventional concepts of Islamic economics. And therefore, I think that all concepts have to be reassessed, have to be redefined uh, according to the Islamic teachings. Uh, and if not, I think uh, they will not be able to detach themselves from the Western ethnocentric measurements, as I think we state in diagnosis and prescription, and therefore we are strengthening the systems of the uh, Western ethnocentric systems, and also we um, will establish either direct or indirectly the business culture, society, not an Islamic society. That's all. Thank you very much. Salam alaikum.